I'm Steve Edelman. I'm Sharon Anderson. Today on Good Company, our field host Gary Luntgen is going to be on the scene at a special haunted house in the Twin Cities that features laughs instead of scares. And our bargain hunter Vicki Audette is going to begin a special series on where we can find name brand and designer clothes for less. Also, field host Gary Lumpkin's taking us to Los Angeles on a special party with former Beatles star Paul McCartney. And here in our studio, nurse Gloria Brancusi from Trapper John MD, actress Christopher Norris. And on What's Hot in Fashion, we're going to show you the latest in neon fashions. All that and more just ahead on Good Company. From the Twin Cities... It's Good Company, with your hosts, Steve Adelman and Sharon Anderson. Field hosts, Gary Lumpkin, Gary Schendel, and field reporter, Beth Wood. And now, Steve and Sharon. Thank you. Welcome to Good Company, everybody. You're probably saying to yourself, what's wrong with this picture? These are our Halloween costumes. Exactly. No, actually, these are what we're going to be talking about a little later on in the show. Uh, Vicki Audette is starting a special series today on how you can get bargain and name brand items, fashions in particular, for a lot less than you would pay for the name brand or the designer label. And this... These are kind of knockoffs? Is that what you call them? Yeah, I am wearing the originals. These are Ray-Bans. And Ray-Bans sunglasses sell for, oh, around $40. And these? Knockoffs you can get for... These look Those like Ray-Bans, but these are only $8. $8, yeah. And I have another pair here, which is a lot. They look almost the same. These were bought here in town for about $6. Huh. Isn't and the difference great? is on these, the ones I have, the $8, they say Taiwan. Taiwan PP, right. whatever that so, means, huh? Yeah. But anyway, this is just an example of some of the things we'll see later on in the show. We're going to get to uh, field host Gary Lumpkin and Paul McCartney in just a moment. But first, we have in our audience, why don't, why don't the two of you stand right here? Uh, being so, Halloween. Some of our people came in costume today <laughs> at our request, and it's just nice that you did that. And what's your name? Joy, Joy Tushar. Where are you from, Joy? I'm from Sioux Falls. Well, I live here now. Okay. Well, now, what is this costume you have? It's... Well, I'm not quite sure what it is. I've been told I kind of look like Cindy Lauper. It started out to be Cleopatra, but I couldn't find any headdresses, so I decided <laughs> to go punk with it. Oh, it looks great. It looks great. And Thank you, you are? I'm Sherry Jobelius. Okay, Sherry. Where are you from? I'm from Minneapolis. All right. And this is obviously a French... Uh... Yes. Ah, so <laughs> you got the whole thing. Are you going to go to costume parties or anything? Um, I hope not. <laughs> okay. I just... Uh... Yeah. <laughs> We just um, aim to serve, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Get, keep the hand out there. Well, for coming in costume, we have for each of you gift certificates for the Mai Tai restaurant in Excelsior. And the Mai Tai has really nice oh, meals. That's for you, you. and for you. Thank you for coming in costume and volunteering to talk about it. Thanks. I like your makeup. Sharon? Hey, he's complimenting me on my makeup here. Take a look into that camera right there and show him your makeup. This has got to be the scariest one here. <laughs> How did you do that, and what are you? Uh, I'm not sure what I am. I don't think anybody else is sure either, but... Uh, I got up, took about three hours this morning. I made myself a noble gesture. I got up at five o'clock. To, to look like this? Yes. Yes. Well. Should have seen it before some of the talcum powder washed off. Oh, how did you put the blue on? What is that? Uh, it's kind of like a grease paint, something uh -huh. like that. And I just put it on with my fingers. Yeah. Well, what's your name and where you're from? Jim Squibb. I'm from Sioux Falls. Jim, thanks for coming in dressed like this, whatever Thank this you. creature yeah. is, huh? Yes. Okay. I'm Happy having a great time. You going to go trick or treating? Oh, yes. So you're going to stay like this all day, or are you going to start it right now? No, I, I brought some makeup on, so I can keep going all day. Okay, well, if this man comes to your house at noon, you'll know. <laughs> he started early. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And we have some people back here who are also, uh, well, let's see. What are you dressed as? Can I have you stand up? Yes. Uh, <laughs> more or less a headbanger, I'd say. <laughs> Heavy metal. Heavy metal, I see. Uh -huh. <laughs> nice, nice wristbands here. Thank you. <laughs> Give this man whatever he wants if he comes to your house. <laughs> Anything he wants. You don't want the tricks from this guy. Thank you for coming in dressed Thank up. Thank you. And we have for both of you uh, dinners for two at Esteban's. Okay. Esteban's there you Mexican go. restaurant. Should yeah, be enjoy that. Rest a uh, Mexican meal. Okay. See? Now, as you we were saying uh, before, we're going to be talking with Paul McCartney in just a moment. As you, you've probably seen Paul McCartney all over television. He's on Good Morning America. He's on Entertainment Tonight. He's on every show. And the reason, of course, is he has a new movie coming out. Now, our Gary Lumpkin went to Los Angeles. Here's Gary because he went to a special party thrown by Paul McCartney and had trouble getting in. <laughs> well, hi, everybody. 
We are here on the street in Beverly Hills, California, in front of the Bistro Restaurant. And behind me is Paul McCartney and his wife, Linda, because they've just arrived for a very special party. It's the premiere party for Paul's new movie, Give My Regards to Broad Street. Now, as you can imagine, the security is incredibly tight. And to get inside is quite an accomplishment. But we're going to do it right now. I'll have to be aggressive because security is so tight, only a few members of the media will actually get inside. Well, this is the inside of the restaurant, but this is not the party. This is all the media people are waiting downstairs. You see, the party is going on upstairs right now. And this is a security man that's blocking the way, and they're only letting a few media crews up at a time. We may never get up there. There's got to be another way. And sure enough, there was. Oh, hi there. <laughs> now, getting inside where the actual party is going on proved to be a little more difficult than I thought. But I found a back elevator. Come on with me. Because you see, the party is on the second floor. Now, I don't know what's on the other side of this elevator, except I know we're going to where the party is. We call it... Hold your breath. Uh-oh, I see a chain fence here. Let's see what's happening. I think we're in. And in order to stay in, I'll just mingle in the crowd a bit because if they can't see me, they can't throw me out. Well, here we are. We are inside the party. The old back elevator trick, it works every time. <laughs> well, that's obstacle number one. Obstacle number two will be to actually get to Paul and Linda McCartney because over there in that group of people where all the lights are, they are in the middle of that and they are just inundated with other reporters, photographers, you name it. Hey, we got this far. I'll get to them. Trust me. Watch. Excuse me, please. Pardon me, pardon me. Excuse me. Pardon me, please. Excuse me. And here they are. After several minutes of pushing through the crowd and several hundred excuse me, pardon me's, I'm right there next to Paul and Linda McCartney. Linda, about Paul's suit, uh, what, what color do we call that? Um, I call that green taffeta. Green taffeta? You disagree, Paul? Yeah, I call it green short silk. Green short silk? Green That's short what silk? It's called. You make your own mind up, viewers. Just what is Paul's suit? Is this a, is this a new trend, perhaps? No, it's a very old trend, actually, this one. <laughs> I have one question about the movie. Uh, Judge yourself as an actor. What do you think? Yeah! All oh, right, Marlon Brando. You tell me. I don't know. Well, we haven't seen the premiere yet. I just like to... Okay, you tell me after. Not the movie. Not the movie. Just yourself as an actor. Movie. He's good. Well, I'll tell you, I enjoy it. So that's all I'm, I can say, really. I don't know if I'm any good or not. I don't think Robert De Niro has a lot to worry about just yet. Well, you know, I don't Thank think he's you. writing any Thank songs you. either. No, well, this is it. See? No. I'll see you a bit later. Thank you Thank very you much. Very much. Thank you. And there it is, a little chit-chat with Paul McCartney and Linda McCartney at the premiere party. Getting in was a piece of cake. And it was lucky I got him when I did, because just moments later, Paul and Linda were coming back down the stairs, leaving the party, and on their way to the premiere of the film. And although they did stop for several more photographs, as it turned out, only a very few members of the media had actually gotten upstairs to talk face-to-face with the McCartneys. And there they go. Paul McCartney heading back down the stairs. We were already up there. We already talked to him. Nothing to it. See you next time. Hey, one more question. Paul, 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 Paul. Let's find out what happened there. Welcome. Gary Lund. You did it. You did it. That's it. You did it, buddy. That's it. Now that's for real. You were sneaking up, uh, yeah, up the no, elevator. Yeah, uh, there's no tricks. We actually had to sneak up the back elevator. That's the, that's the honest truth. I have a little bit of a cold now. That's the voice is uh, funny. But yes, we did. Um, we had a contact that had arranged for us to, to go up, supposedly only a, only a certain percentage, a small number of the, of the crews. And we were in that select group. But when, once we got there and things kind of got, I mean, there was 20th Century Fox doing anything. There was publicity people doing something else. Uh -huh. There was nobody in charge. So we kind of got pushed aside. And so we found that back elevator, 
and uh, and snuck up. And I was so afraid. I thought, this is it. I'll be calling you for bail money. I'll be arrested. <laughs> right. And you know how we are, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you'd, be, you'd be there still. I'd be there till May 1st, I think, something. But, uh, so tell us the truth. What was it really like? I mean, here you were just kind of thrust in front of Paul and Linda. I mean, you must, your heart must have been beating on that one. I was. It, it was obvious, too, that I had to, I mean, just just start the conversation because they weren't waiting for, for anybody to you know set up any formal chit chats. Yeah. Uh, I was I was kind of uh, excited by it all and well I had brilliant questions. I mean I asked him about his iridescent suit or something <laughs> you know. But uh, weren't you afraid at any moment someone was going to grab you by the was. collar? And there pull was somebody back? there was somebody tugging on me all the time. Really? On my back? Yes. It was a. They pulled up in their limousine at the beginning there. You couldn't see it, but there was their limousine and there was another car that um, just like the president, four giants coming. They come screaming up to the uh, uh, the premier. I mean to the sidewalk and these big huge guys get out of the of this second car mm -hmm. and form this uh, uh surround them yes just surround them and got them off the sidewalk and those were the guys that were around them in this party <laughs> at, wow and there was all these flashing lights we, you know we only have a second but did you see any other big stars there that you recognize uh priscilla presley was there yeah um jane seymour mm -hmm. uh weird al jankovic oh yeah uh the comedian michael keaton from mr mom uh it was there so there were there were some but we thought there'd be more rock and roll stars there but they, but they weren't. Uh, they were just well, those and a, and, a, and a handful of others. They were good for you. Oh, it was yeah. great. It was great fun. And, and it, it turned out to be kind of a cute way of getting in. And it was a little scary, though. I, I thought for sure at the other side of that elevator would be one of those <laughs> giants, gorillas types, you know, to put the heavy hand on but me. But you made it. <laughs> we That's got the, great. We got a little chit-chat anyway. Yeah. Thanks, Gary. You bet. Oh, i got to run now, by the way. Uh, I've got to get to that haunted house. Uh, uh, so I'll be back a little bit later in the show. But i got to run right now. There's something going on. There's some kind of problem on the streets. And... Uh, we'll, we'll, You're going to uh, check it out. Well, I'm going to check huh? it out. Okay. Our very own Ghostbuster. <laughs> yes, it is. Gary Lockett. <laughs> Thanks, Gary. We are back. It is time for our amazing household hints. Amazing household hints. Before we do that, though, it's super bargain number one. We have a meal deal. This is a good one. If you want a super sandwich, a croissant sandwich, you can go to one of two places, Bon Appetit or La Baguette. We'll tell you where those are later, but first, take a look at that place. There is Bon Appetit. Now, we're talking about two different Twin Cities locations. They have different names. It's a typical European store. They have a bakery, deli, a cafe. They offer a little bit of everything. They have a special coffee, pate, pasta, fruit salad, etc. Now, there you're looking at one of their most popular combinations, and that's what we're having on as a super bargain. You can get a soup of the day and either a half or whole roast beef, or you can get a ham croissant sandwich. You can get both of these for 50% off. Those were the prices, $3.65 to $4.95. Today and tomorrow, only half price. And you can either eat those in those restaurants or take them out. Where now, are those places? I'm glad you asked. Bon Appetit is located in Butler Square, just in case you haven't been there. And uh, in city center, they have La Baguette. So if you're looking for a, a lunch that's inexpensive, try these out, especially if you haven't been there before. It's a good way to do it. And ask for the good company Super Bargain. 50% off will be yours. Two more Super Bargains coming up later on in the show. But first, hints. And we have a Halloween hint to start, huh? Yeah, here's a Halloween hint. This one was sent in by Deb Archer of Apple Valley, Minnesota. First, Deb has an idea that we can just tell you. She says if you have trick-or-treaters coming to the door, something she used to do, she used to take Polaroid pictures of them. Oh, that's fun. Isn't that great? Yeah. And they just give it to the kids. That's darling. It's a little expensive, though. Yeah. So, you know, whatever. But it's about it's a dollar a picture, I think, isn't it? You know, but if you have three kids, you know, they're three winners. If they <laughs> cut, cut it off at five. <laughs> you kids don't get it. You kids do. Okay. <laughs> anyway, but uh, here, this hint was sent in by Deb as well, and, and how to make your own Halloween makeup. And Sharon, why don't you try this? All right. Uh, one tablespoon of solid shortening. Just take it and throw it right in here. Okay. What are you looking for? Oh, Little yeah. Old household hint. If you put that in water first, it comes right out. Okay. <laughs> Fairly good old There's a hint, hint that almost works. <laughs> One tablespoon of cornstarch. There you are. All right. And then to that, you just add your food coloring. A drop or two of food coloring. Mix the whole thing up. And you have makeup that you can smear. See, now you didn't think of this, our man in the blue face. You could have done that this morning just like that. All right. Okay. You just mix it up and you have makeup? That's what they say. You have makeup. Put a little more food coloring in there. Okay. Yeah, that'll How's do that? it. <laughs> yeah. This uh, this makeup will look 
suspiciously like dough. <laughs> Don't you worry about it. It does look like dough. Now, huh? this should be able, you should be able to smear this on the whatever. Well, let me try to put it on put my a hand. little hand, yeah. Yeah. Just grab some and see. I okay. didn't really get it mixed up too well yet. Put it on the back of the hand. Whoop. Okay. Ooh, it does work. It does? Yeah. You see that the warmth of your skin melted down a little bit, so okay. I put Where a little more food coloring in it. What's uh huh. It? Is that good? Yeah. If it okay. were mixed better, it would work better, but I think a little more food coloring, maybe even a little more cornstarch, or just have it better mixed. Yeah, and it's getting so dry lately. It's nice and, you know, moist for the skin. Yeah, Crisco's right. not bad for your skin either. Yeah. All righty, we have a tuna trick. This was sent in by Bonnie Jello of River Falls, Gello, I think it is, of River Falls, Wisconsin. Steve, I'm going to have you do this. Okay. Just open up this can of tuna. All right. Okay. Oh, never mind. There we go. All right. Just open it all the way around. Okay. All right. I hope it stays in your... Why don't you grab it? All right. Okay. So you got the top off. Right. But actually, you leave the top on. You yeah. You take the opener out. Then, you know how when you try to take the top out, you get your hands all smelly with the oil of the tuna? She says, all you do, turn it upside down in the sink over a tumbler, and then press like this. And that'll take all the oil out of it because the glass is, of course, pushing up into the tuna without taking the tuna out itself, not wasting a precious drop of the special tuna. You're getting all of that awful oil out of there without ever touching it on your fingers. Another advantage is it takes the metal shards and forces them right <laughs> into the tuna. No, yeah, you think what it does? It? No, I don't think it would do that. No. All right, so then you're all finished. You got all the, the oil out. Just dump that. Top. That's a nice idea. And now you have your tuna drain, just like that. Okay, here's another one. Okay. This was sent in by Judy Nays of Maple Lake, and she says that, get this, here's a, here's a good one for you. Okay. She says, if you put oranges in a hot oven before you peel them, you will get no white fibers when you peel oh, them. Oh, it would be like parboiling them, only put them in the oven instead. Well, perhaps. Should we try and see? Let's do it. Now, we have one that was had no oven here. Uh, this one was not done in the oven, so we'll just kind of... Take this and see what we get here. You know, when I was a Boy Scout, they said, never do what I'm doing right now. What's that? I'm peeling toward me, you know? But why are you ignoring that advice now that you're a grown-up? Well, because I got to Explorers, and they said, forget anything you learned when you were a Boy Scout. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, so you can see all the white in that one. Okay, now we're going to try. It's a mess. This That's is just pitiful. <laughs> yeah, it is sick, no, isn't it? it's just It's terrible. really sad. Let's see what happens with the one that was put in the oven. Okay, this one... Oh, I, I heard that Bob Bruce, you know, when he was uh, doing our show while we were out in Los Angeles, really cut his finger, so I'm really yeah. paranoid. I can't even get through this thing, wouldn't You better do this what because is the people deal? are holding their breath in anticipation, right? Wait a minute. Oh, everybody's excited about this one. There. I, no, I, well, I should use my thumb, right, but, you know, I, I don't want to get that juice in my finger. You know, it stings and all. You notice that... This is not working at all, Steve. Oh, wait a minute. There you go. It is, in fact, working. What a surprise. Can you now see you this should enough? be able to just peel it off with your fingers. This is phenomenal. Look at this. Mm -hmm. Is this exciting? Look at this. Oh. Whoa. Hey. You know, I can't remember the last time I had a better time. <laughs> Look at that. That thing peels <laughs> off just, I, look at that. That really is amazing. I wonder how long she left it in the oven. Two days. <laughs> no. What do you think? What do you think it would how take? How long do we have Five this in the oven, gang? Less? We're going to check on that. But that, I've never seen that. That works a, great. That just, you know, and if you like hot oranges, it's especially good. <laughs> Warm okay. oranges. Oh, we don't have any more time no, for more of these No, but let's take our cards from the, the uh, ones we used today. Put them in our uh, okay. fishbowl because today we're doing the drawing. This is for the Norwegian blue fox car co coat that's being offered to us by Ribnick Furs. It that's looks right. Like that. It's a beautiful coat. It's worth over $475. And now the people who had their hints used will have an opportunity to win that. Yeah. And I am going to close my eyes and just pick one out These of are the hints that we used on the air during September and October. Okay. Okay, his eyes are closed. Let's see. The winner is the Traveling Yarn Holder. That was a popular one. It was a 7-Up bottle, empty 7-Up bottle. You put your yarn inside that. And the winner is Susan Larravee from Bruno. That's right, Minnesota. from Bruno, Minnesota. Congratulations, Susan, to you. And we are going to be giving away a snowblower next. We'll be right back. Stay where you are. Coming up in the next half hour on Good Company, we'll announce more super bargains, including a 50% off deal on women's handbags. And we'll meet Trapper John M.D.'s nurse brand koozie, actress Christopher Norris, and on What's Hot in Fashion, we'll see the latest looks in neon. 
Coming up next, bargain hunter Vicki Audette begins her special series on how to get designer fashions at discount prices. All that's still ahead on Good Company. Thank you. In just a moment, our bargain hunter, Vicki Audette, has some advice for you. You know how you can get what they call knockoffs of designer kinds of things? I mean, it's not illegal. For example, if you have shoes that are Basswegians and you don't want to pay a Basswegian price, people make basically what you'd call, what, what would you call them? Knockoffs. Uh, the same kind of thing, but it's a lot lower in price, and she's going to tell us where you can get that. But first, before we do that, it's time for Super Bargain number two. Now, this is a super handbag deal at a place called The Pickpocket. <laughs> The pickpocket? Okay, anyway, the pickpocket is in St. Louis Park, and that's what it looks like. It looks like a new store, by the way. And what they have is a great deal on women's purses and bags. It's a specialty boutique, and what they offer is designer and brand name handbags and accessories, and their prices, they say, are always below retail. Take a look at that. Now, we are offering Stone Mountain Pierre Cardin. They have all those different brands. We're offering Stone Mountain or London Fog purses and handbags, which usually cost from $18 to $100. They are charging 50% off their ordinary prices today and tomorrow. Now, as it says there, there are a variety of styles and colors. There is a limit of three per customer, because how many bags can you carry at once, right? And, uh, and that's, of course, while supp supplies last. The pickpocket, by the way, is located in the Texatonka Shopping Center. Actually, it's the shopping mall. And uh, they are going to extend their hours to 9 o'clock, both Wednesday tonight and Thursday, tomorrow night. So if you're interested in the handbag and you'd like to get it uh, less expensively, uh, you can go there and ask for the good company Super Bargain. 50% off will be yours. Good deal. And now, some ideas on where you can get knockoffs of designer items. Sharon? Right, Steve. Vicki's starting a special two-part series today on where we can get designer and uh, name brand products, primarily fashions, for a fraction of the cost. And uh, we're talking about knockoffs, right, Vicki? Knockoffs, tell us what that means. What is a knockoff? Well, basically, like C Steve said, it's a copy. Mm -hmm. And what a lot of large discount chain retailers do is they copy and have manufactured for them uh, designs that look similar to designer or name brands. The same season that they came out originally. Right. And what they do is they actually go to the show, Sharon, and they find out what the buyers are buying the most of and then they go back to their manufacturers and they say okay copy this as close as you can uh -huh. and so they sell it for a whole lot less great the difference is that I found in doing this series is in a lot of the cases you're going to find that what they will copy most is the styling details and the color and you may sacrifice a little bit on the quality of the fabric or material but let's take a look today at what we've got on videotape because I think you're going to be surprised at how similar some of these copies really are. All right. And you can get by. Now here on the left hand side of the screen is the coach purse. Now that regularly retails for $80. The knockoff to that is the, the Dorsel and that's for half that price. Both leather? Both leather. Now this, uh, the Bass Weegians, these are great. Re regular retail price is $6 to $8. Payless has a loafer for $17.99. Looks exactly the same. Only thing it's missing is the leather sole. Mm. Now Payless also carries a tennis shoe that looks just like the Converse tennis shoe and the price is about 50% less. Were you sacrificing the fit on things like that? Um, you might somewhat, you know, if you have a preference. But if you're just looking for style, now this is good. This is the John Henry blouse and the guest jeans on the left-hand side of the screen. And what you're going to see here is how uh, Hit or Miss put together their own blouse and jeans to match. Now this is the guest label, and Hit or Miss has a very similar label, and only theirs is called Utility Jeans. And you'll notice in the blouses, this is the John Henry, and that collar, Hit or Miss mm. is duplicating exactly the same in similar colors. And you'll notice some styling details. This John Henry in the front has the overlap over the buttons, and they so did the same that. thing in the Hit or Miss blouse. It's not as generous, however. In the back, the John Henry blouse has the pleated back, and you'll notice that in the Hit or Miss blouse, they're using the same styling detail with the pleated back. So they are definitely copying that. But look at these shoes. These are women's shoes. The Nine West is on the left, and that's $46. Payless has the knockoff for that at $18.99. Now the difference, Sharon, is that the Nine West is definitely leather, 
but uh, in a case like this, I wonder if you need them in leather. I want to show you what they look like. Now, for example, okay, this is the pay less. This one I have in my this one left that you hand, have huh? in your left hand, and feel that. Now, the Nine West, of course, is leather. And well, it's a textured leather, though, so yeah. it's not like a smooth, soft kid. Uh, right. There's almost no difference at all in the feeling. And my feeling is that a pair of shoes like this, especially in Minnesota, where shoes don't really last that long, if you can buy it for $13.99 instead of $46, why not go for the knockoff? Yeah, because the style is almost the same. This one has a little higher heel. Yeah, this one actually, the one that we saw the on the videotape, one. the Nine West that we saw, is exactly the same. Is it? Yeah, today somebody was wearing these and I said, quick, give it to me. But this is very close. <laughs> um, so that's what happened with that. But, you know, I guess what you have to decide really is, for the money that you're saving, do you necessarily need all of that quality? Right, exactly. Well, where do you go then to buy these things if you want to buy the knockoff versions? Okay, the knockoffs that we showed today, I'm going to show you exactly where you can buy them. Now, um, first of all, we're going to see that, um, I'm not sure which it is first, um, but we have, for the Payless shoes, of course, they're located all over town, and for the Coach purses, you can buy the copy, the Dorsel, at Collections Boutique, Where's and that's, that? that's located in, on Louisiana Avenue South in Minneapolis. Okay. And they'll have all sorts of knockoffs of the coach bags? Yes. Mm -hmm. And Payless Shoe Source is where I got all the shoes today. And they're located at several locations in the Twin Cities. Yes, I've seen them around. All right. All right. Now, for the guest jeans, and hit or miss is the place, because they do definitely knock off the guest look. Same fit, too. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's located, this one is in Harmar Mall, and there's four other locations in the Twin Cities. All right. Good information. Uh, Vicki's going to continue our series tomorrow. What are we going to see? Tomorrow, you know what we're looking at? This is really interesting. We're going to see knockoffs on linens, things like towels, rugs, sheets, comforters, that type of thing, which is really unusual. And we're also going to take a look at copies of expensive perfumes and watches. Perfumes, really? Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Do, do we have just a moment? Vicki has a great story. Just a moment. Oh, Sharon. The had sweater. To Remember, Vicki showed us the sweater that she was going to get at the cancer sale, or she got ra rather at the cancer sale. It's a Missoni sweater. This is a Missoni sweater. I didn't know, but this is actually a men's sweater. Mm -hmm. And what happened is, I showed this on the show on Monday, and the person who whose husband donated this sweater saw it and <laughs> almost died because <laughs> she bought this sweater for her husband. She paid $450 for it. In New York. In New York. <laughs> he never liked it. He snuck it into the donation <laughs> pile and it got into the Cancer Society's sale, which is actually coming up this weekend, and I bought it for $2. <laughs> so this? she calls him. So she calls him at work and says, did you donate that Missoni sweater? And he said, how did you find out? She said, I just saw it on TV. I mean, he couldn't believe That's it. That's funny, of all the things you could have taken. That's I love this wild. story. This is going to be one of my best And it's bargains. a gorgeous sweater. Thank you. Right, okay, <laughs> thank you. I'll continue our series tomorrow. We'll be right back. <laughs> Coming up tomorrow on Good Company, join us at the famous Chasen's Restaurant in Los Angeles for a special party with a cast of Dynasty. On our beauty makeover, identical twins get two different new looks. Field host Beth Wood shows you an afternoon outing at the Minnesota Ballet. Coming up next, actress Christopher Norris, nurse Gloria Brancusi on TV's Trapper John M.D. That's just ahead. Thank you. Trapper John MD, a very popular program when it was on the network, a very popular show in syndication. It is currently showing, as you may know, right after Good Company at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, Monday through Friday. Now, of course, it stars Pernell Roberts and our next guest as well. As well. She plays Nurse Brancusi, and we are going to meet her in just a few moments. But before we meet Christopher Norris, let's take a look at a scene from Trapper John. Let's watch. What's the matter? Uh, Mildred. She says I spend a lot of non-productive time with the patients. I told her that talking with them cheers them up, and it's an important part of their recovery. Right. What'd she say? 
She handed me a cookie and said I dawdled. Uh, I do not dawdle. Do I? Doctor, Gloria needs a second opinion. Um. Um. Do you think I dawdle? Well, you've never done it with me, but I'll bet you'd be pretty good if you tried. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Uh, Mildred thinks I waste time on the job. Mildred. Don't worry about it. She hasn't had a sane thought since the day she got here. Maybe in her whole life. You hear that, Mildred? You're out of your mind if you don't think Gloria's the best damn nurse in this hospital. Stick that in your videotape. And Nurse Brancusi is here. Welcome, please. Christopher Norris. You're looking trim. Gorgeous out there. Thank you. Yeah, have a seat. Well, welcome to the Twin Cities. Well, it's my pleasure. I get to actually wear some warm clothes. You know, I miss all of that. See, that's <laughs> unique for you, isn't it? Well, it, well, sort of. I'm, I'm from back east. I'm from New York originally. Uh -huh. but, uh, do you miss the change of season? I sure do. I sure do. I miss the sweaters and, and coats and everything. I know that's kind of boring to hear. <laughs> I know you're not really looking forward no, to this. No, we're fine with that. How did you get the name Christopher? That is unique for a woman. Uh, yeah, I, I think my parents just had a sick sense of humor, <laughs> <laughs> honestly. Um, they just happened to like the name, so I got stuck with it and yeah. have defended it all my life. Right? Now, in the show, you play a nurse who is also a single parent as well. Mm -hmm. Did you get some mm -hmm. fan reaction to that situation? Well, yeah, I think uh, I'm representing a growing number of people in, in the country right mm -hmm. now, and, and that is an enormous responsibility, working young woman and so on, and with, with a... a a daughter who has uh, chronic illness, mm -hmm. so, and so that's a problem. Do you get advice from the fans? Do they ever send you a letter saying, Mate, well, you ought to try this? Uh, well, I get a lot of empathy, yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> sympathetic letters. Um, not so much advice, just I've been through it. She's, I know she's difficult, but hang in there, she's worth it. Should I get a lot of that. <laughs> now, I know that in real life you took off a lot of, of weight, and that was also reflected, of course, on the program. How did you do that? Um, I grew up, I was, <laughs> was kind of young when the show started uh, six years ago. I, really, I haven't lost that much weight. I think it's just kind of readjusted itself <laughs> around my body. Uh, just just kind of that. I also cut out red meat. I don't eat any red meat. Really? Do, do you see a change? Are so many people doing that? Is there a change in your body? Yeah. I, I know now when I, when I go for that steak or whatever, I really feel a difference for a couple of days. How does it feel different? I kind of feel logy, you know, a little slower and mm -hmm. and not quite as, oh, my goodness. <laughs> you, Hello, she, happy Halloween she, to just you. Just looking too. in our audience, we have some people <laughs> going to ask some questions and they perhaps surprise you by their look. It just, just kind of took me by surprise. Yes, well, let's get some questions. <laughs> this is how yeah. we all look in the winter in Minnesota. The, the blue see. lips, it just happens automatically. Yes, you have a question for Christopher. Yeah, I was wondering if you were married or not. Uh, uh, yes, as a matter of fact, I am. Too bad. Um, <laughs> <laughs> she was wildly attracted but to you, I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, as a matter of fact, he has blue lips, too. Isn't that funny? <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I understand that originally your character was supposed to be Ripples. Mm, yes. Yeah, tell me about that, because she didn't end up being that kind of a character. Well, uh, the first year, which is now being shown, uh, uh, I guess the next hour, uh, I was my character was Ripples, and uh, when when we started the series, it was still around the time when Charlie's Angels, uh, Three's Company, all those kinds of wiggly shows were still on, mm -hmm. and that was appropriate. But I didn't tend to think that it was. So after about you didn't a feel year it was for half, you, no, or for the person I was representing. Uh -huh. You know, she was a. A professional, and uh, I didn't think, no matter how lovingly they called her Ripples, it was still a, a sexist kind of dig, and and uh, so they finally agreed with me, and so now she's known as Gloria uh, Brancusi, and and I think that's only appropriate. I, I really don't see anybody going around in an office or in a hospital calling their their nurse. Hey, Ripples, you know, it just didn't quite work. <laughs> ripples, <laughs> yes, it sounds like good for a potato chip, but I'm mm. yeah. anyway. Oh, question, yes. Yes. Yes, I'd like to know if you had any special training to portray the part of a nurse. Well, as a matter of fact, I did. I, uh, I worked uh, with uh, nurses on the floor for a while, and then I, I did some uh, research in emergency rooms for about a month 
uh, just watching and trying to stay out of the way, but at least so we know, and I, I wouldn't misrepresent uh, the nursing profession and look like I knew at least a little bit like what I was doing. Sure. That's right. And as a little bonus, I understand uh, you are endorsing nurses' uniforms of some sort? Is that well, right? um, I have, uh, yeah, I have uh, gone into the uh, schmata business and uh, I am uh, helping design uh, nurses' uniforms mm -hmm. for uh, young career women. And uh, what I'm really excited about, however, is that I am donating the profits to create a National Student Nurses uh, Scholarship. So I'm very excited about that. Good. Yes. Have another question out here. Yes. How old were you when you started the series? I was uh, 22. And you've been. No, I'm so much older. <laughs> and you've been in the business a long time since yeah. you were a wee little one, huh? When I was three, I started uh, as an ivory snow baby. Did you really? Uh, yeah. And uh, yeah, my parents were in show business. Uh, my father was a conductor, and my mother was an actress. And, I just kind of fell into it very naturally and, and liked it and uh, have been fortunate enough to be working ever since. You know, you hear so much about uh, actresses who start very young and how some of them say it's just not the thing to do if I had to do all over again. I'd start when I was older so I could be normal and all that. How do you feel about that? Well, uh, my parents made sure I think I had about as normal a childhood as one could have uh, working, uh, earning a paycheck, mm -hmm. but uh, I wouldn't have given it up for anything, honestly. It was different, and there were trade-offs, but I think it was a marvelous uh, growing experience, and it gave me a lot of self-confidence. I don't know that I would have had otherwise. Good. Congratulations on your success with Trapper John. Thank you. And we want to mention again, for those of you who haven't seen the show for some reason, uh, it is on at 4 o'clock right after the Good Company show, yeah. Monday through Friday. And thank you for joining us today. My Christopher pleasure. Norris, Nurse Fran Cruiser. <laughs>Fashion. We're going to be talking about neon fashions. Have you seen people walking down the street in maybe really bright neon socks or sweaters or hats? Well, those are really hot for this winter, and it's a way that you can use them in your hats, socks, shoes, or even in big sweaters and even in big jackets, as we're going to see in just a moment, to kind of give you a lift this fall and winter. And the person to tell us how to wear our neon fashions, of course, our fashion consultant. Please welcome model and fashion consultant, Corbin Seitz. <laughs> I think that's just darling with the pumpkin and the socks are too much. Listen, we can't miss these socks, Sharon, because these socks glow in the dark. Do they really? They are genuine, guaranteed, advertised <laughs> to glow in the dark. Do you have two pair on there? Yes, the underneath ones are lime green and the outer ones are the orange that are genuine glow in the dark kinda socks hard from Dayton. Kind of hard to choose when you so wake up. So if you want to drive your husband crazy, one night you turn out all the lights, you put these on <laughs> and nothing else. That's right. Surprise. <laughs> 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 and then just right. run around the house. <laughs> That's I right. Think that's a great idea. That's right. Well, and, you look uh, fabulous. Like I say, you can get those at Dayton's, <laughs> ladies. And uh, the sweatshirt with the neon pumpkin is from uh, Dance Center in the Galleria. And this is fun because, you know, all of us don't always end up in a Halloween costume at Halloween, but you can kind of enjoy it and, you know, wear some fun things that they've go got with to the go holiday. with the holiday. Sure. Neonomania. Now, neon, we've seen it in the socks. I've seen it in small accessories, but you're talking about wearing it even more than that, aren't you? We saw it last spring and summer, if you kind of remember. We did a few neon things, and I told you then that it was going to be coming back in the fall and it was going to be big, and mm -hmm. it is big. Dayton's has all of their windows done in neon this week. It's all over, and you can find it in the beautiful wool mufflers in uh, beautiful coats, hats, everything. So you can do it a little or a lot and you can do it crazy 
or you can do it fashionable. Tastefully, huh? Absolutely. Okay, let's take a look at some ways that you can wear the neon fashions if you'd like to invest in a few this winter. Yes, and like I say, they're in all stores and they're all around town. Um, uh, our first model is from Dayton's, and she's got on a Betsy Johnson neon outfit. This is a fuchsia big sweater, and this is one of the hottest sweaters of the season. It is absolutely giant. And she's got the fuchsia uh, beret on in wool, chrome yellow gloves, a darling little mask supplied by Teener's Costume Supply here in town, uh, bright blue sweater leggings, and fuchsia suede wow. boots. Isn't that so yummy? you put though? all those together. You wouldn't just put one on, huh? No, you, the idea is to wear a mixture of colors, and uh -huh. that's what you want to do. Our second outfit is from Benetton's. And Benetton's has good working sportswear. This is a, a regular cords in a sweater, but it happens to be in a cherry and yellow combination, uh, which is really glowy and fun. Notice she's got on two hats. That's another way you can do it. You can do a hat on a hat, a pair of gloves with another pair of gloves over it, just like I've got two pairs of socks on, and you fold one down and show the other color underneath. And again, that's Benetton's. This is Dayton's, and this is pretty wild. This is all lace. She has on orange and black, Whoa. and she has on orange lace pants underneath that are almost like tights, and an orange lace tank top, you're seeing it there, with a black lace blouse, and then a black lace skirt, which obviously you can see through, so you need the orange lace yes, tight pants do. underneath, and that's from Dayton's. And you can wear that, if they've got it in pink and every kind of crazy color, that's a crazy outfit. This outfit is from Benetton's also, and she looks like she's having a good time, doesn't she? Yeah. She's got on cords again, and uh, she's in a lime, fuchsia, and yellow combination. And again, the bright glove, she has on a pretty angora turtleneck underneath, and the sweater has the, the bright splashes of color on it. So you see, it doesn't have to be in something really wild and really strange. It can be in regular, fun sportswear. It's just that the dash of color is really what I think we need in the winter. Oh, look at this. <laughs> Thriller. Oh. Now, this is a really uh, very uh, designerish look. She has a beautiful poncho in lime green. This is from Dayton's. In a, and then underneath, a chrome yellow, big boxy blazer. And you wear it over black. You see, that's all you have to do. You don't have to have a lot of neon to go a long way. You can have just a splash of color here and there, and, and you end up with a real I think big impact. Basic black stockings, basic black pumps, black gloves, and and you've got the look. You, you really can do like it as little or as much as you want. Yeah, and also if you buy it in a blazer like that, it goes through the winter, it gives you a little pickup, and then also it looks good in the spring because it's not a heavy, dark winter color. Yes, and obviously you can use the chrome yellow blazer with the black, or like you say, in the spring with pink or something yeah. like that. I mean, it'd look really, really pretty and I think would be really fun. Give us a tip if you're going to go out and want to buy one thing in neon. I think do. the idea would to be, start with, most of us have a basic black outfit, so start with your black turtleneck sweater dress or your black slacks and a sweater and maybe buy uh, a beret and a big, two mufflers maybe, maybe fuchsia and yellow, mm -hmm. and a fuchsia beret and maybe some yellow or fuchsia gloves. And of course the socks. Right. <laughs> and of course you have to have the orange day glow socks. Absolutely. And then you can invest a little that way and then go from there. See how you like it and see what you think. Um, I wanted to show you two quick things. One is that if you haven't seen these, these are the little uh, night light sticks that are great for your kids. They glow in the dark. It's not dark enough in here to see, but you can see on TV they are fluorescent. Mm -hmm. And they're only like $1.29 or something, and people use those as part of their costumes as well as things to protect their children when they're out walking around. This is true neon. Good idea and, for uh, Yeah, mm -hmm. it is. And also tell you about a fashion show that's coming up uh, at Dayton's in Minneapolis. It's um, at the Sky Room, and it's on November 6th at 6 o'clock. November 12th at 6 o'clock. And it's going to feature men's and boys' clothes by Alexander Julian. It's a cruise and holiday wear. It's uh, $12 for a ticket, and all of those proceeds go to the um, Fashion Group Scholarship Fund. So even though uh, the tickets are $12, they are for a benefit. So you can go on November 12th and uh, do the reverse. Take your men and your family to a fashion show. Men's and boys' clothes. Right, see That's what great. they think. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, can I borrow the socks? Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> That's what's hot for today. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> Thank you.
I hope you have some nice Halloween plans. And, uh, you know, a lot of members of our audience came down in costume. We thank you for that. And for each of you who came in costume, you will be getting a gift certificate for Donatelli's Supper Club. They're in White Bear Lake and Woodbury. You can choose the one you want to go to. And uh, that's just a little thank you from us for coming in costume. Thanks. Well, things might look a little strange at Donatelli's tonight if all these folks show up all at once. <laughs> we have our third super bargain of the day, and this is a chance to eat out and maybe try something that you may not have tried before. We call it a super seafood deal, but actually it's a chance to try some Cajun food as well at two different places. First of all, at the Mariner, which is located in Mendota, they specialize in uh, all kinds of seafood, including Cajun food. Really good Cajun, too. Yeah, it is. And that's what it looks like on the inside. And here's what we're offering as our super bargain. Today and tomorrow, you can get the shrimp and sausage jambalaya. Mm. This includes shrimp and spicy sausage and rice, 50% off. Normally, that costs $6.95 for lunch and $10.25 for dinner, but you will get it for half off while supplies last. And that's today and tomorrow. The Mariner is located in downtown Mendota on Highway 13 North. So, if you'd like to try some Cajun uh, jambalaya, there's a place to go for that. If you're near the Minneapolis area, you can go to the Minneapolis Cork for a super seafood deal that's also Cajun. The Minneapolis Cork used to be the Cork and Cleaver. That's what it looks like, and they have uh, very comfortable surroundings, five separate dining rooms. I didn't know they had Cajun food. I didn't realize it either, but they do. They have quite a bit of it, and that's what we're offering today and tomorrow. This is a blackened orange roughy. It comes with crab butter sauce. Now that usually costs $6.95 for lunch and $11.95 for dinner. You will get it for 50% off today and tomorrow only while supplies last. And the uh, Minnesota Minneapolis Cork is located at 905 Hampshire Avenue South in Golden Valley. So if you want a chance to try a little Cajun food, here's a chance to do it at half price. Good idea. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, since it's Halloween, it's always fun to go to a haunted house. So our Gary Lumpkin is on the scene right now, but he's at a haunted house with a difference. We understand this one is really featuring comedy rather than scary things. Now, I think Gary is... Gary, where, where are you exactly? Well, Steve, I'm at the Comedy Cabaret in Minneapolis. And you're right, this is a, a haunted house tonight that features comedy, but there's a problem. As I told you earlier on the set, there seems to be a bit of a problem. And it, this gentleman right here, who you may recognize... Uh, uh, who are you, sir? I am Dracula. I, I probably should have not go into this haunted house. What's the problem? It is supposed to be a haunted house, but there are no Draculas, no Frankensteins, none of my friends. None of your friends are there? No, no. So you're, you're picketing this, this haunted house? Yes, yes. It is unfair to those of us, the undead and the spirits of the night. <laughs> this is Halloween after all. Well, I tell you what, in the uh, spirit of good company, I'm just going to have to investigate this myself because, uh, frankly, uh, I don't understand why you would what, be picketing a haunted house. So I'm sorry, I'll, but I've got to take a look. Yes, you have a very handsome throat, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, so oh, Gary, if they're not letting the, the monsters in there and the, and the scary yeah, there's no monsters. I don't, I don't. It's not going to be scary. Oh, wait a minute. I'd oh. like to talk to you about life insurance. You know, if you're like most people, you're woefully underinsured. <laughs> This is scary. An insurance salesman. Insurance people can help you with a comprehensive policy for as little as $50 yeah, that's a That's good. Thank you very much. No, no, no. That's, that's too scary. Wait a minute. What is this? The corridor of the terminally slow. Uh-huh. Wait a minute. I can insure you, too. Okay, great. Now, wait a minute. We're moving into the darkened corridor here. Um, excuse me, ma'am. Pardon me. Pardon me, please. Excuse me. Pardon me, please. No. Uh, she seems to be blocking the way. You're so slow here. Uh, excuse me. I'm... Oh, geez, uh, here. Well, I think we're by here now. Okay. Yes. The corridor of the terminally s slow here. Minnesota's answer to a... Uh, yes, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> well, as you can see, it's, uh, it is kind of scary, as a matter of fact. Well, wait a minute. You're not, uh, you're not very scary. What are you doing here? I'm here to give you a helping hand. Oh, that's great. Oh, jeez. Oh. <laughs> uh, that's terrific. Thank you. Have a nice day. Yeah, that's great. The corridor, <laughs> and now the three-handed person. I tell you, you should mention something about our safe oh, drivers. No, 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 come on. Now for as little as seventy-five dollars extra a month. Talk to Stephen Sharon. They're expecting a thousand-dollar deductible. Oh, you're expecting? Well, we have family coverage. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, 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 no. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. There's more. There's more. Yeah, sneaking around that corner for you. Woke me up from my nap. I got Bridge Club coming in five minutes, and you haven't even run a vacuum. This is scary. A nagging person. Oh, no. You didn't slam that door. I'm not heating the outside, you know. Uh, Stephen. you put that bike away. Stephen Sharon made me come. Talk to them. Stephen Sharon, if you let that dog out once in a while, you wouldn't be tracking that stuff all over the house. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, this, is, this is absolutely... Yeah, straight. I'm sorry. This is too scary. I'm getting out of here. There's more. I know there's a lot more, but I'm getting out of here. I'm talking to you. Okay. This is absolutely too... Oh, no. 
of accordion music and feelings. Sharon, this is for you. Feelings. Our company will ensure absolutely anyone. <laughs> oh. How scary could it possibly be according music, a nagging person, an insurance salesman, and I should have I taken your advice. I told you not to come in here. <laughs> well, anyway, this is the comedy cabarets, and there's a lot more. You had just seen a, the first few people. Uh... Turn that thing off. Oh, okay, well, back to you, Stephen Sharon. I'm in trouble. Hey, Gary, how does the thing work? When are they open? Oh, yes, it's tonight from 7 to 11. Yeah. And its admission is $3. Uh, it goes on and on and on. Like I said, we barely got inside the door. <laughs> Tonight's the last night from 7 to 11 here at the Comedy Cabaret, 28th and Hennepin in Minneapolis. <laughs> it's too scary, too scary. <laughs> Great group. Thanks, Gary. There are scarier things in the world that than goblins and That is a terrific ghosts. idea, isn't it? <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. Yes. So that's what's happening. We'll be right back. Stay with us. <laughs> This is Eleanor Luthi, and Eleanor represents the St. Therese Auxiliary because they are having a special Christmas boutique. Tell us about That's that. That's right. Our boutique is Thursday or Friday and Saturday of this week from 9 to 4. This is a bus fund project. The proceeds of the uh, boutique are used for renting buses to take the people of the uh, home in, out into the environment. And we should mention that it is uh, in New Hope. It's in New Hope, okay. 8000 Bass Lake Road. Mm -hmm. And it is, as I say, it's a little of everything. All right, and everybody's it's invited. I'm sorry, everybody. I have to cut you off because we're at the end. But oh. the number to call if you want more information is 529 4683. Right. Hope you have a nice turnout. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Sharon? We hope you do have a very happy and a safe Halloween, and we want to tell you that there are places you can have your children's candy that they collect x-rayed if you would like to do that today. There are some locations, Hennepin County Medical Center, North Memorial Medical Center in Robbinsdale, Fairview Hospital in Minneapolis, and Fairview Deaconess Hospital. There may be a few more also, but call the hospitals uh, that we mentioned to find out the exact hours that they will be doing that x-raying. Coming up on tomorrow's show, a beauty makeover and identical twins who get two different looks entirely. Also, Sharon and I are going to go to a party with the cast of Dynasty in L.A. Thank you for joining us. Bye-bye. <laughs>